Hey everybody, what's your status? As in, what's your participant profile status? See, participant profiles have different statuses that determine if and how participants can operate in the FedNow service and at what capacity. These are things, of course, like the send and receive messages or access the FedNow interface. What's your status on being able to do that? There are a couple of rules you need to know on the statuses. All participant profile status changes are made by the Federal Reserve Banks. Mm -hmm. That's right, they make those changes. And number two, customer credit transfer send and receive or receive only participants are also required to sign on and off of the FedNow service when necessary. You should be on as much as possible though. So here's a simplified version of the different statuses of participant profiles within the FedNow service. You ready for this? Inactive. This is the default status when a profile is created. It's not active until you've signed on. Next, the participant and the Federal Reserve Bank can edit the profile in an inactive status, but messages cannot be sent and received in an inactive status. The inactive status continues until the profile is completely and fully set up and an effective date is set for the profile to become active, which should be our next status, but it's not because we're going to talk about being deactivated. The deactivated status applies when an existing profile is no longer being used for the FedNow service. You get deactivated, messages cannot be sent or received. And the participant cannot access the FedNow interface because you've been deactivated. Participants set up for customer credit transfers, send and receive or receive only, will be signed off of the FedNow service if you are deactivated. And if you need to reactivate because you've been deactivated, well, to reactivate, you must go through the entire onboarding process again. Now, a profile may not be deactivated as another option is you could potentially be suspended. A suspended status is a status that restricts a participant's access to the FedNow service for any reason. Messages can't be sent or received and access to the FedNow interface is actually disabled when you are suspended. If you are a participant that is set up for customer credit transfers, you know, again, send and receive or receive only, you get signed off of the FedNow service because you're suspended. We don't want you sending or receiving anything. Now, when suspension gets lifted, as a participant, you will need to sign back onto the FedNow service in order to start receiving payments again. That's when suspension is lifted. Another status we have, pending activation. All right, this pending activation status applies to profiles that are set with an activation date. See, a participant in the Federal Reserve Bank can edit this profile before that, that date, during this pending activation status, but no messages are sent or received. This status will continue until the FedNow service cycle day rolls over to that effective date, which is typically going to be 7.01 p.m. on the date that they have chosen to become active. That's our next status, active. The active status applies once the effective cycle date begins. The participant in the Federal Reserve Banks can edit the profile and messages are sent and are received. Participants set up for customer credit transfers? Well, you better be signed on to the FedNow service if you're active so that you are actively sending and receiving those messages. And there's actually another status that we need to be aware of. And that one is pending deactivation. Now, pending deactivation applies to profiles with a deactivation date. As a participant, you or the Federal Reserve Banks can still edit your profile. And believe it or not, during pending deactivation, messages can still be sent and received because you're pending deactivation. You're not deactivated yet. Now, this status remains as pending deactivation until the FedNow service funds transfer day, cycle date, rolls over to the deactivate date, which will typically be 7.01 p.m. on that specific date. Now, the participant profile status in the FedNow service what it does is it determines your ability as a participant to be able to interact and conduct transactions or even make changes within your profiles. Now, each status signifies a distinct phase from the onboarding to active participation and potential deactivation or even suspension. If you're inactive, that's your default status upon creation. No messages are going to be sent and fed or there's no FedNow interface access. If you're deactivated, your profile is no longer being used. No messages are going to take place. Reactivation is going to be required, and that requires going through onboarding again.
If you're suspended, well, you've been restricted from access and well, that's probably because you were being bad. No message exchanges and no FedNow interfaces happening while you're suspended. If you're pending activation, that means you got an activation date set, but you're just not ready just yet. So no messages get exchanged until that cycle date actually happens. If you're active, well, that's good. It means you're fully operational. That means you have messages that are flowing and well, you can access the FedNow interface. And if you're pending deactivation, it means the deactivation date has been set. You can still exchange messages until, until your status changes to deactivated on the effective funds transfer date for your pending deactivation to end and you become deactivated. And our last status, that's the status of class being over. Class dismissed.